Hello, today I will be going through setting up the JDBC and ODBC connection using the IRI Workbench with SQL Server. When you first load up the Workbench, this is going to be the screen you're provided with. Um, it's very helpful, has some tips and tricks, get your foot in the door, recommend taking a look when you get a chance. We're going to X out of that. If you want to bring that back up, you just click help and welcome. First things first is we're going to create a IRI project. So that way we can test the connectivity of our databases once we're finished. So you can either click here, File, New, IRI Project. If you want to give it a name, we're going to click Finish. And now we have our first project. Next, we're going to move on to setting up the JDBC connection. So underneath the Data Source Explorer, if you don't happen to see it or you X out, you can go to Window, Show View, Data Source Explorer. From here, we're going to click on this little icon, New Connection Profile. Since we're doing SQL Server, that's what we're going to look for. We can give it a name, and we're just going to leave it as default, so you can give it a description as well. Here, we're going to be adding a new driver, so we're going to do a new driver definition. We're going to be doing SQL Server 2008, and again, you can change the name if you'd like. We're going to move on to the jar list. We're going to remove what we have here currently, add a jar. We're going to go to where we have our JDBC installed. From there, we're going to go on to properties. And we can actually just leave this blank. We don't have to change any of this. Um, sometimes it does cause a few issues if we do. Um, it just depends on the circumstances and what you need, but for right now, I'm just going to leave this blank. We're going to click OK. Under the database section, we're going to go ahead and enter our database, our host, our port number, username, and password. I'm also going to click the Save the Password. And as long as everything was done correctly, we should click the test connection and it should say ping succeeded, which it does. All right, I'm going to show you what it looks like when we fail a connection. So we're going to remove a little bit from the host. We're going to test the connection and it's going to give us a pop up window that says connection failed. Just like that. And this is going to give you a little bit of information based on what went wrong. So it's going to say connection to the host has failed. All right, so we're going to put that back. We're going to assess the connection and we're all set. So we're going to click finish. And just like that, we have our JDBC connection set up. So from here, we're setting up the ODBC connection. So we're going to do the drop down menu of help. We're going to go to version information. And here it's going to tell you what bit version you're running, which is 64. We're going to click OK. From here, we have to go to IRI Preferences, IRI, Connection Registry, Database Connection, and change this default bit version to 64. Click Refresh, Apply and Close. Now we can go back up to the drop-down menu, ODBC Administrator Dialog, and now the ODBC Data Source Administrator will be in the 64-bit version. So from here, we can either add the user or system. I'm going to choose user, click add. We're going to find SQL Server, finish. We can give it a name, like such. And then in the server option, this is actually going to be your host. We're going to click next. Then here, we're going to do this, so that way we can enter our own login and password. Like so, we're going to click next, next, and finish. It's going to have a pop up here, test data source, and it says test completed successfully. We're going to click OK. And now we have it added here. We're going to click OK again, drop down menu, IRI preferences, IRI, connection registry, database connection. And here you can see the SQL Server that we have added. We're going to go ahead and edit this. 
we're going to select the bit version. We're going to add the username and password. Like such, you can choose to encrypt if you'd like. And then mapping for the connection profile is the SQL server we created down here. We're going to click OK. As you can see, it's authenticated. We're going to activate it. We're going to apply, apply and close. And now we're going to test to make sure everything worked. We're going to go into a schema. We're going to go into a table, one that is populated. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and right click, IRI, generate DDF. We're going to click next and finish. Okay, and everything looks like it populated correctly, but just to double check, we're gonna go ahead and go into the column section and just check the first few columns to make sure it's right. So trace column ID, package name, and action name. So with that being said, uh, we have just finished the tutorial on the SQL Server, JDBC, and ODBC connections.